Hi there. As we know, Windows is quite a heavy operating system. If I press Ctrl or Delete and go into Task Manager and then go into Performance, we can see that Windows at idle with a completely fresh install comes to 2.2 gigabytes of memory use. Now on an 8 gig machine, this isn't too bad, but if you're running a 4 gig machine, that's more than half your memory. And as you can see, as I'm talking now, the memory weight is climbing and I'm not even loading any applications. But there are distributions of Windows out there that are far lighter. The real magic comes in the amount of system resources used. If you remember before, we're going up to 2.7 gig on a 8 gig system. And this is using 0.8 gigabytes of memory. So the resources are much lower. The other thing to keep track of is the CPU usage. You see this is a nice flat line here, indicating that very little is happening in the background. In fact, we only have 40 processes. One example of these operating systems is Atlas OS. It is an operating system that is basically a stripped down version of Windows 10. As you can see, their website is fairly polished and quite professional looking. They claim to be open source, but you should be aware that you cannot claim a distributed version of Windows is open source. It is proprietary closed. And this means that you don't have access to all the operating system files and what might have changed. In addition to this, Atlas strips off a number of security features like Windows Updates, Windows Defender, and a few others. But its basic goal is to give you as many resources back and prevent Windows from doing all the usual things it does in the background, like installing updates while you're playing games. It is highly recommended that you do not use this software on any kind of professional or work computer or a system where you are going to go about performing shopping tasks and other financial tasks. Do not consider putting this on an old laptop with low resources and then using it for business. This is because despite their best intentions, mistakes can happen and this is an altered version of Windows. So please be safe and be security conscious. So with that in mind, we're going to download this ISO and I'm going to install it into a virtual environment, one that is safe for me to use. I have also installed this on a little blue laptop with only four gigs of memory and it, and it did free a lot of resources. So as to whether or not you want to use this, it's completely up to you. You've been warned. It's now your decision. So we're going to download the latest 20H2 version. And as you'll know, this will be in line with Windows updates. Currently, we're on 22H2. So that gives you how old, that, that gives you an idea of how many updates behind this is. And again, that may be some cause for security concerns because it means the latest vulnerabilities have not been patched. So while we wait for that ISO to download, the other piece of software you should get is called Rufus. Rufus is a tool that's used to write ISOs to USB drives, allowing you to boot off them. Simply go to download and click on Rufus 3.21 or whatever version is on the page. And while this is downloading, we can launch Rufus and get ready. Now we have Rufus running and we have Atlas OS ready to go. All we have to do is select the device we want to write our ISO to and then select the ISO itself with this select button here. I'm going to double click on Atlas and then I'm going to click on start. It's now asking me to create a local account. So I'm going to create a local account with the username Daniel and I'm going to click on OK. Then I'm going to click on OK again. It will then delete the petitions on my USB drive and write the ISO in a bootable state. And with that, our stick is written and ready to go. So I'm just going to close down Rufus. To install this software natively to your PC, all you have to do is go into your BIOS, set up the boot order and tell it to boot from your USB first. 
Bear in mind this will be a full Windows install, so you will be wiping out all the data on your existing machine, so back up your data first. But if like me you're just curious, then you can use a program called VM Workstation Player. This is a virtual machine, which allows you to try out installations of software without affecting your main machine. So what I'm going to do now is create a new virtual machine. I will just put the dot in, I will install the operating system later. I will select Microsoft Windows, I'm just going to set it up as Windows 10 x64. And I will call it Atlas OS. Then next, I'm just going to give it a 60 gig hard drive. Uh, I'm going to store as one single file on my drive. And then I'm going to customize my hardware. So I'm going to give it half the resources of my computer, which is going to be 8 gigs of memory, half the processors, and I'm going to virtualize with AMD V extensions, which will help speed things up. So once I've done that, I will simply close and click on Finish. I then click the Power On button. I'm going to click No on that first warning. And what I'm going to do now is go to Removable Devices and click on the USB I just made. Then I'm going to click on Full Screen. I'm going to wait for it to cycle and detect the USB drive. Right now it's trying to boot off a network device. It can take a few minutes to do this, so please be patient. So I'm going to go to Boot USB Device. And then we have the standard Windows Setup logo appear. One of the things to bear in mind if you're going with any redistributed versions of Windows is whether or not it asks you to sign on with a Microsoft account. Not every version of this software will be legitimate and you need to make sure you get it from trusted sources. If you don't and you attempt to log into any account on that machine, you may find yourself key logged and you may find yourself hacked later on. I'm going with Atlas OS, not because I trust it, but because in the community it has a relatively good reputation. However, again, for any serious business tasks or any security related tasks, I do not recommend using this operating system. It should only ever be used if you're looking for a very lightweight gaming system on an old machine. So I'm going to select the license terms and click on next. And we're using unallocated space. So as you can see, this is basically a standard Windows 10 install so far, which is no great surprise because all they've done is taken Windows core files, built it out as an ISO and added their own dbloat scripts on top of it to reduce as many system resources as possible and remove as many features as possible. If you're installing this directly on a computer, then you will have an identical process to what I'm showing now. The only difference is that I'm using a virtual machine just to make sure that I'm absolutely secure and I don't have to sacrifice another machine to play. So now we are at the restart phase. I will restart now. It should now boot directly on the virtual hard drive. If you're using a real machine, it will just boot off your normal hard drive. And anyone who's installed Windows 10 on their machine before will find this a very familiar process. So now we just go through the usual setup of selecting our region. The keyboard layout. I'm not going to add a second keyboard layout. We'll wait for the important setup to continue. It should be noted that you do not need a network connection to install this software. It will not ask you for an online account. And again, I remind you that if you are ever using a piece of software like this, you should not sign in with your online Microsoft account. It may end up compromised. I'm going to give myself a name, CK Enthusiast, and my password. If you have a single common password, I strongly suggest that you do not you do not use your typical password because again, there's always a small chance that something may go wrong. It may not be for the installation of Atlas OS itself. It may be from the fact that you've installed something else on your system that would allow this information to be leaked. 
So it's asking me what pet's name is. I'm not going to give any security information about myself. I'm literally just going to select random questions. And I'm just going to go one, two, three for each of them. And that's purely because I don't want my information leaking out anywhere. And that's it. We now have a copy of Atlas online. You'll need to give it a moment because it should load up a bunch of scripts and start reducing itself. There we go. So this is the de-bloating process that's happening right now. These are the open source scripts that they advertise on their website. You can go and look at the code and you can see exactly what's being done. A lot of people won't, and there is a certain danger in that, because unless you read a script, you don't necessarily know what it's doing to your machine or what's being installed. So we just wait patiently for all these little black windows to go away. It would be better, in my opinion, if Atlas OS gave a lot more detail as to what it's doing. The operation completed successfully gives you no idea of what features are being removed, what's being changed on the system. It's all very confusing if you're just reading the text, which is again why I'm saying that the only way you can really know a script is to go in and read it yourself. So once you've finished that, it will restart the machine. So I log in like a normal Windows system. And there we go, we have our Atlas installed. As I am in a virtual machine, I'm just going to quickly adjust my display settings. And there we go, we have a full desktop environment. You'll notice there is an Atlas folder right here. And it's got software to install, and a bunch of links and some scripts to run. It's got drivers to install. It's got some configuration information on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and other things. It's got some advanced configurations for NVIDIA and some other software like Affinity. It's got some optional tweaks, some troubleshooting options and some utilities. We've also got some documentation that you can go through as well. And that's it. So Atlas OS is now online. So what's the big deal about this? It really just looks like a normal copy of Windows if you don't look too hard. But if you do a Control Alt Delete, the real magic comes in the amount of system resources used. If you remember before, we're going up to 2.7 gig on a 8 gig system. And this is using 0 0.8 gigabytes of memory, so the resources are much lower. The other thing to keep track of is the CPU usage. You see this is a nice flat line here, indicating that very little is happening in the background. In fact, we only have 40 processors. So if I boot into my other copy of Windows 10, we can see how this compares. So one of the things you won't have to contend with with Atlas OS is op operating system updates like this one. That is both a good and a bad thing. On one hand, it means it won't be updated in the background. On the other hand, you're not getting any secure updates, fixing any security problems with your operating system. So if I send a control or delete into this, we can have a look at the resources. As you can see, on boot up, I'm using 2.1 gigabytes of RAM. It's got 127 processes running, more than double what Atlas was. And the CPU usage at the beginning is quite high. I find it takes about three minutes for Windows to settle down properly, even on a clean install. You can see from that processor usage there that it's being utilized quite highly. We're creeping up in memory usage to 3.4 megabytes and I'm not even doing anything. Except it seems to be automatically running Skype. I've also noticed that it's grabbing some stock data from down here. 
it's put a little decoration onto my search bar. It is producing a lot of background tasks that you may not notice unless you're paying attention. And you can see the way it is thrashing the CPU even after two and a half minutes of the laptop having booted up. But now we're hitting a nice flat line of low CPU usage. But even when it's low usage, you'll notice that these spikes are fairly consistent. And if nothing else, this is demonstrating how inefficient modern Windows can be. Do you really need to know what the temperature is? Do you really need little graphics? Do you need advertising and everything else that appears within modern Windows? It's got St. Patrick's Day or St. Andrew's Day traditional Scottish dance. These are not things that I've particularly wanted to search for, but they're all being offered to me anyway. Some people may see this as a boon, but I personally see it as a lot of unnecessary things that I don't necessarily want going within my operating system. And it is something I feel that Microsoft should allow you to opt out of rather than relying on third-party scripts like Atlas to do with the stripping out. So now we've hit a relatively smooth period. We can see that we're using three gigabytes of RAM and that our CPU usage is hovering about the 1% mark while the CPU is being clocked at 2.9 gigahertz. So you can go over to CPU and you can see how all the cores are being hit as well. It's not just a single thread on the processor, multiple th multiple threads are being hit during Windows standard boot up. So now I'm going to boot into Atlas OS once again and we'll see how that is in comparison, though we should have a pretty good idea already. Now I suspect one of the benefits of this is that Windows will load up a little bit quicker. As you can see, it went straight to the boot screen there. It was quicker than the last one was. Now, if we do a quick control alt delete, and again, we go to performance, you'll see that memory usage is very low and it's not using any of that CPU thrashing that was happening in the previous copy of Windows. Everything is brought down to a minimum. The number of processes is only 40. If I go to Resource Monitor, we can see how the CPU is being used and you can see that it is basically quiet on all the cores. We've got cores 0, and total going up and we've got a couple of spikes across everything else and that may be more to the fact that resource monitor is running than anything else is running in the background but as you can see CPU usage is pretty low and you can see memory usage as well and you can see a list of everything that's loaded into memory. It's a good idea to go and have a look at the processes just in case there's something that's a little bit off that might be monitoring you that you might recognize. And that's it. That is Atlas. It is a stripped down version of Windows that does away with a lot of the bloat, freeing up system resources so your machine will run a bit faster and with a bit more memory. And if you're using a PC with four gigabytes or less of RAM, it could be very valuable for that reason. But I will leave you with one final reminder that this is an altered copy of Windows, not by Microsoft, not distributed or supported by Microsoft. It receives no updates of any kind and has no security enabled of any kind. This is effectively the most insecure version of Windows you could possibly find, and you use it at your own risk. But as a curiosity and as a comparison as to how bloated Windows really is and how bloated it doesn't necessarily have to be, this is a good example. So this is Atlas OS. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment and like on my videos.